and that brings Einstein to the picture. And so Einstein, Einstein was born, I believe, in um, in 1879. Uh, 1955. Uh, you know, uh, check it, check it. If, uh, if uh, check it, uh, let me know if this is wrong. Um, Einstein gave us a set of laws that also define uh, the new picture of the universe, reinventing the physics from uh, once again. He says that the law of physics. Same everywhere. And number two, uh, he said that, uh, he said that the, 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 the speed of the light, the speed of the light is constant. We call it C. And then, and then, and then he said, he said that we can we can even describe it by math that the, the alpha is one over one over one minus uh, c square over b square. Uh, yeah. So 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 he also he also said that the, the unified description of gravity that gra uh, the, the the gravity is nothing but the geometric property of space and time. So he said gravity is geometric of space and time. So he said gravity is a geometric product of space and time. And then he said that the gravity is, is the byproduct, is the byproduct of curvature of space and time. So that means in another way, gravity is a byproduct of curvature of space and time. Number four, number four, he said that the curvature of space time related to energy and momentum of, of whatever matter and radiation presence in the system. So gravity is a function of is a function of is a function is a function of space time uh, related to is is a is a is space time uh, related to energy um, the energy and momentum Of whatever, of 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 whatever matter and radiation presence in the system. Which we can calculate by using his field equation. Remember, his field equation is one of the most uh, difficult, uh, difficult equation in, in, entire, in entire science. It took him eight long years to develop that equation. It's known as Einstein field equation. The name is not important, but, uh, but, but it gives us the entire picture of the gravity. It, it, it allows us to solve, solve the problem, Newton law, usually couldn't. Newton thought that the gravity was the instantaneous force. Um, he thought that, 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 he thought that, that if, for example, think as a scenario, if all of a sudden, if sun disappeared from the, from the solar system, what, 
will happen with the earth according to Newton. The earth will, 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 will release from its orbit instantaneously. But the, the, the Einstein said, no, 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 wait a minute. The earth will not release from its orbit instantaneously because the gravity is not an instantaneous force. No force in the universe can exceed the speed of light as he postulated in his second law saying that the speed of light is constant and it is 3 times 10 raised to 8. The number is not important but the important thing is no force in the universe can exceed, can exceed the speed of light even gravity, even gravity. So, so Einstein gives us an idea, he said that when the sun disappear from the solar system, you know, it will take at least eight minutes for Earth to notice, to notice that there is no sun up there. Then the orbit of the Earth will release um, the Earth itself from its, from, 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 from its orbit. Um, and, and that's the new picture of the gravity. That's, that's the new picture, enter a new picture of gravity. So his, his, his law, his equation help us to solve the, 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 the what is gravity and how to calculate that. His field equation, that's how his, uh, his field equation goes, um, is, uh, is uh, R mu minus half G mu R plus uh, um, G mu uh, mu uh, co um, cos uh, cosmological constant equal to 8 pi uh, g um, c raised to 4 t mu r. Okay, so this is the Ricci tensor. This one is the, the first one is the Ricci tensor. And the second one is the, the metric tensor. And the third one is a cosmological, cosmological constant. And this is um, the gravitational constant, you know that. And this is the energy tensor. Okay, so now let's first go back for a second and let's see how Galilean idea, let's use the Galilean idea to solve the gravity problem and then we'll use the Newton, Newton equation to solve the gravity problem and then, <coughs> then we will use the field equation to solve, solve gravitational problem. Again, this is not the entire picture of, of the gravity because, um, because, because the Newton law break down when things go near uh, speed of light and even Einstein field equation break down when at the center of the of the black hole. That's why in the beginning I mentioned that the gravity is the most, uh, is the is the mysterious, is still mysterious uh, force of the universe. Even though, even though, even though Isaac Newton uh, discovered this force um, some 350 years ago, but it still remain mysterious force in the universe. So let's mm, let's try to calculate using the Galilean um, Galilean way. So let's go back to Galileo. Okay, so so Galileo and Newton. So okay, so the Galileo gave Galileo said f equal m g, and Newton said f equal m d square x over d t square. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, let me write it nicely. Okay, All right. So if you combine these two equations, if you combine the Galileo and the Newton equation, let's see what we're gonna we're gonna find. We're gonna find a beautiful equation called equivalence principle. Let's see how we can derive the equivalence principle from using this uh, from deducing these two equations. So let's write f equal minus m z. Well, the m is the mass and g is the gravitational constant. We know that that is 9.8 meter per second squared. So, the f is, we're going to 
uh, we're gonna replace f by that equation m is d squared x over d uh, dt squared uh, dt squared m and equal to negative so yeah the beautiful thing is the m m cancel so what we get we get d squared x uh, dt squared equal to minus z and this is the equivalence principle what equivalence principle tell us that means the rate of falling body is not function of its mass it doesn't matter how heavy or how light you are it doesn't matter and the aristotle remember said the heavy object fall fast and the light object do not fall as fast as the heavy object that's wrong because the uh, the equivalence principle tell us mass doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's only matter how far you falling from if you falling from seven feet tall building um, you know that, that would not be a big deal but if you fall from 70 feet tall building that would be a problem so don't try falling from 70 uh, 74 feet tall building because of that if that if the height goes up the gravitational constant also also goes up and you end up like you know breaking all of your bones. don't try that so um, so the, the 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 fact of the matter is that the 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 heavy object and the light object fall at the same time and you know uh, David Scott, one of the astronauts of NASA, uh, experimented in 1971. He, uh, he, he had a rock on one hand and the feather on the other hand, and he dropped the both objects on the surface of the moon, and then he, he observed that the both fall on the same time. Why moon? Why it works on the moon and it doesn't work on the earth? Simply because the earth gravitational constant is enormous, is 9.8 meter per second squared. But moon gravitation, the gravity on the moon is small. It's just 1.6 meter per second squared. Why moon has a smaller gravity and earth has more gravity? It's simply because moon has, moon is smaller. The small body is the less gravity. In fact, you know the sun, the sun has the big sun has 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 more more gravity simply because it's big. What is the sun gravity? Is 274 meter per second square. What comes after sun is uh, is Mercury. What is the Mercury gravity? Mercury gravity is just three three meter per second square negative. And then the Mars. This is Mercury. And then the Mars. Mars gravity is 8 and then the earth is 9.8 and then the 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 mercury and then the venus and the earth and then the mars mars is 4 and then the big jupiter is 25 and the saturn is 10 and then the uranus is 8 and neptune is 11 so you see the bigger the object is the bigger the body is the bigger the gravitational constant is sun has a more gravity simply because it is big on the other hand moon i didn't draw moon here if i uh, if you want me to draw moon this is earth so i draw moon over here is just 1.6 that's why when signed when astronaut nasa astronaut david scott drove uh, the rock and the feather he saw he observed that the both fall on the same time proving that the Galileo's hypothesis is correct and disproving that Aristotle hypothesis was wrong that heavy objects do not fall fast in, in fact heavy and light objects fall at the same time so let's um, let's go back to solving this problem um, I'm solving this problem so that the problem is that the Galileo's um, Galileo um, Galileo's uh, contribution is that uh, d is uh, initial velocity plus initial velocity t plus half 
it is clear, all right. Now, he did not have calculus. We know that the Newton invented calculus long after his death. How did he derive this formula? He used algebra. He used the algebraic manipulation to derive this, this, this formula. We're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to see how did he do that. So, that's how he started. Um, the velocity is the initial velocity plus the final velocity of a tube. We thought that 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 the, the the average velocity has to be since the 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 velocity uniformly increase. So when you take the initial velocity and adding with the final velocity and dividing it by two, you get the average velocity. That's what he did. Um, he divided by two. So, so what, um, and then that, that also can be, uh, can be written as and t minus t zero if the, the, the initial time is zero, we can rewrite this formula as x minus x zero over simply t. So now uh, we can just now what he did he was very clever. So he replaced the the, the average velocity by a acceleration and x. Um, let me get the different color. So. So he replaced it by B, and this is B naught. So he did, he wrote B minus B naught over T, and if we do the cross multiplication, we get B equal to B naught plus A T. So now then, then what he did, he wrote the equation, that equation again. So he wrote that equation again. B B minus B naught, uh, B um, X minus X naught, So B naught can be replaced by B, uh, B bar can be replaced by this one. This is B bar. So average velocity is this one is over two times t. Now B can be replaced by this guy because uh, this one is simply this one, all yeah, right, so you're gonna do that. X zero plus B naught plus B naught plus A T over T and everything is, everything is multiplied by two. So let's see what we get. We get X naught plus two B naught plus 80 over 2, divide, uh, multiply, all multiply by t. So x naught plus 2 b naught over 2 plus 80 over 2, everything divided by 2. So if we count this 2 by r, we get x naught plus b naught, uh, x naught, uh, well, we can do the distribution. Very simple distribution, and you can write half a t squared. And there's, there's the formula. <coughs> there's the formula for. There's the formula he gave us. There's, there's the way he derived that. D is equal to um, initial velocity plus initial velocity to half d naught plus. Uh, 
plus initial velocity time time half at square. So with that, we're going to try to solve a problem. So that's how he derived that, uh, that formula. So we're going to use that, that equation that uh, gave us by Galileo. Uh, so we're going, to, uh, we're going to solve a physics problem. So let's say, an object, a ball, let's say a ball, is dropped um, the initial velocity is zero from from pizza let's let's use the same building that he used to draw feeder uh, and the And the, and the other object to see whether the heavy object and light object fall at the same time. So pizza, who is, is I believe 70 feet tall, 70 meters, uh, who is, is 70 meters tall, 70 meters tall and high, the same thing, huh? How far will it have fallen after a time? After one second, two second, three second, and so on. So let's use this formula to 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 see that. So you see if this is a this is a uh, this is a, a leaning tower of Pisa. Um, I'm, not uh, I'm not that good in drawing, so if this is a 70 meter tall and then the object dropped from, uh, from, the, from, the, from, 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 from the, from the rooftop, um, the object can be anything, say a ball, um, with the initial velocity of zero. So remember our initial velocity is zero and let's, Let's say time is zero. zero. So what, how far will it have fallen at one second, two second, and three second? So we're going to use simply his, his formula. You know, the, that, 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 that is very interesting to compare that. You know what Aristotle would say? Aristotle would say that at the first minute, if first second it falls, the ball falls first second five meter, the second second would be five meter, the third second would be five meter, the fourth second would be five meter. So after four second you fall how ma how how far? Four times five twenty. And after three second, what the Aristotle would say? Well three second, if every second you fall five meter, then three second fifteen meter. Well, Aristotle would say fifteen meter after three seconds. Let's see what Galileo said. 